Hey guys, come for MC here. Today we're going to be talking about sequencers. Sequencers are pretty simple on the surface, um, but when you start to get into their complexities, they can become pretty daunting. So what we're going to do today is we're going to cover the basics, and then we're going to jump into some of the subtler things that you can do with sequencers. So let's get to it. So, the first thing that we're going to do is place down a microchip. I always use a microchip because it condenses everything within it. So we go to the sequencer here, it's the red icon in the advanced logic tools, and place it down. You'll notice that it automatically opens up, and we're going to go ahead and shrink it down. You can shrink using left and right, and you can scale it up and down, and which allows you to fit more things on it. Okay, so we'll just place it here, then we'll go into the sequencer tweak menu. Notice that it has a trigger radius, so normally you would wire the input to the left little node on the bottom there, or reset it on the bottom. But, normal, but if there's not a wire there, then you can just set the radius on your own. Now notice that there's three stripes there. So the setting here is seconds per stripe. And we also have a loop option. I'm going to go ahead and make it loop and leave it at the default one second per stripe. Okay, And I dropped into the level there, my camera took over just so I could get the sequencer moving. Notice that it passes one stripe every second, so it goes the whole sequencer in three seconds. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you guys basics of how to use batteries on sequencers. Notice that I can scale the batteries, just like with the sequencer, using up and down. And notice that when that red stripe passes over the battery, that it'll light up and it will output that 100% or whatever your battery is set to. Okay, now I'm going to need something for it to actually trigger, so I'm going to pull out a piece of hologram material and use that as a light, just because it's easy. Then I grab my wire for my battery, wire it to my light there, and now when the battery lights up, the light does the same. Simple, right? Okay. Now we can also do a few more complicated things, not that this is going to be too crazy. We can use a second battery and add a second light. And we'll start our basics of a sequence of lights. So notice it'll light up the first light and then the second light. So you can arrange your batteries however you would like, but batteries are not the only thing that we can use. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those because they bother me. Delete our lights. And we're going to see what happens when you put a tag on the sequencer. So just like you might expect, the tag will light up when that bar slide glides over top of it. So when it does that, it's going to generate a signal, and we're going to see if we can't pick up that signal. Oh, it looks like it's not working. Notice that the tag sensor and the tags are technically on the same circuit board. So everything is within that bottom circuit board on the little square of dark matter right there. Okay, So we're going to have to move our sensor off of the circuit board in order for it to work. So see, now when it goes over that battery, it picks up that signal with our tag sensor here. Because that circuit board is within the range of our tag sensor. Okay, so let's see what else we can't do with this. Let's pull out another piece of hologram material, place that down, and then run a wire to it. And remove that back a layer because keep it nice and tidy. So there, you'll see when that hor that vertical line goes over our tags, it triggers the light, and we have done that with no wires running between the two and I can extend my tags there to achieve the same effect that I could by extending my batteries. So this is all pretty simple so far and we can also do some more complicated things where you add different colored tags to the same sequencer and if I do that I'll have to make my pairing with my tag sensor a different, the different color to match up. So you'll notice that now we have green and blue tag sensors lighting up at the bottom. Okay, 
So that's tags, basics of tags. Um, it has some nice applications when you're looking out for it. So what we're going to do now is show what you can do with circuit boards on sequencers. And in fact, they do work. So notice, whatever I have on my circuit board, it will work for as long as that red stripe is over top of the sequencer, or the red stripe is over top of the circuit board. So if I set up a really simple circuit board here, just run a NOT gate to itself and to the, the tag there, it will turn on and start flickering for as long as that stripe is over my circuit board. Now the one caveat here is that if you pick up your circuit board and you try to scale it, you can't. It's locked into that size, which is a bummer, but we work with what we've got. Okay. So we've learned that you can put sequencer or put circuit boards on sequencers. You can put tags and batteries. You can also use world tweakers. I'll go ahead and put a score giver on there, set to 10. So now every time that strike passes over it, it'll give 10 points. So notice it's sourcing from this circuit, uh, the circuit board down there. And probably the most interesting of the things that we can use is sequencers on sequencers. It may seem silly now to think about that. And let's go ahead and turn this one to start playing forward and turn off the loop. So it will only start playing forward when it gets turned on by the other stripe. So notice that they're moving together but they're out of phase with one another because that second sequencer doesn't start until the first sequencer gets two thirds of the way down. But we don't have to have them set to the same time. So let's say I set this to 0.3. Now let's go 0.2. So now when I get my sequencer going Notice that it will trigger that top sequencer, the inner sequencer, to go faster. Now you may be asking yourself, why is this useful? Well, notice that when we put tags on here and you make a pattern, you can't make your tags any smaller than half of a bar. Okay? Well, putting a sequencer inside of a sequencer allows for a workaround for that. So now there are three short bursts within that one stripe. Fancy, and we can speed that up to make our short bursts even faster. So it allows you to have a little more control on your sequencers without having to change the, the time of the whole thing if you wanted something faster to happen. Okay, so that's sequencers within sequencers, which has nice uses. I just went over a simple one there. We're going to show another setting though. You'll notice that it's set to start playing by forward, start playing forward by default. But we can do some other interesting things if we change that input type. So I'm going to wire up a timer here, set to reset itself just so it plays over and over again. And I'm going to set my sequencer to positional. Notice that we have start playing backwards, speed scale. And if you look at that one, you'll notice that it goes faster depending on where the timer is and here's positional. Positional is probably the most useful setting of your sequencer that you can get. Notice that that red bar that we've set up or that that horizontal moving vertical line it will move at the same rate as our timer so it will match the positional setting of our timer. In what's really going on here is that timer is giving a signal as a percentage of a hundred and the sequencer is matching that signal as its position out of 100. So I could set up a similar thing to what I had before, but now I can have control over how fast the sequencer is going to move by changing what the input signal is to it. So we'll just set it to that, and we'll show what else we can do. So, oops, that's a timer. Let's use a counter. So counters do the same thing. They have a a percentage out of a hundred. So if we have a target count of five, each time it goes up, it'll go up 20%. So to make it easier, I'm going to match my sequencer to have five stripes because I have five settings for my counter. So notice what happens when I take my, oops, set that back to five, my current count up to one, it'll hit that first one, two, second one, 
and three third stripe. Four, it'll go to that one, which doesn't have a key, and fifth, it will go all the way to the end. Now, how is this useful? Well, let's set up a timer here to make it my counter go up automatically. So notice that if I set this to one, every one second that sequencer will step up each step up a stripe or 20% of the way across. It's pretty handy. And notice we get the same effect there, but since we have the first, second, and third are all turning on that key, it just looks like it stays on for a while. Okay, we can do some other interesting things here. So here, let's expand this key all the way to the end, which means that key will turn on, and that key tag, stuck in little big plant one mode, that tag will turn on after it's been turned on for one, and then it'll stay on for two and three and four. And I'm just stepping these, so we have five tags that'll turn on, and it'll add a it'll add a tag each time it counts up one. But notice what's happening. It's resetting before that last tag can hit. So I'm going to expand this to six, and I'll do the same for my counter so the stripes match up. So now it'll add one, add one, and then reset. And then add one, add one, add one, add one, and reset after the last one. Okay. So right now I have this, so my sensor, I'm going to make this a little bigger because we're going to make a couple of copies. And the number of keys required is set to one by default, which is generally how we use these. So I'm going to put this on each one and then make a few copies. Move this out of the way. So I'm going to make a few copies of this to show some of the things that we can do with this. So I'm going to make five copies to match up with my five stripes that I'm going to end up using. And then I'm going to go into my sensors here, my tag sensors, and change the number of keys required to two, three, four, and five respectively. So it's going to look for that number of tags before it turns on. So now the first one, second one, third one, fourth one, and fifth one. Because by the end there are five tags lit up, so the one looking for five tags will be able to turn on. And then I can change this sequence by increasing my timer, and we get a nice little effect there. So this is mighty handy. I know I've used this several times, not necessarily for this, but I've definitely done something similar. Okay. Last thing we'll talk about is, and I gotta just clean up here. So I'm gonna use the same sequencer. I'm just gonna delete my logic that I have here. And set this timer back up to four seconds wire it to my sequencer and change this and get rid of our keys and change this back to start playing forward because we want it to start playing forward when the timer gets to the end and then we're going to show you some of the things that we can do with magic mouse so I like to stretch my magic mouse to be one stripe and then shrink my sequencer down so that it's one longer, one little tick longer than one stripe. And you'll see why I'm doing that in a second. Notice that every time, oops, I have it set to repeat here. Let's see if I can, oops. No, that's just gonna make the delay longer. I need to set this to stop repeating or looping. So now it will play once every time the timer gets to the end. And notice that I don't have any text going, so let's add some text here. Sample text. And then let's also set it to subtitles. Subtitles are pretty popular because it just displays text at the bottom of the screen, which has a lot of nice uses. So notice that I have my timer set up so I can control how often it plays or you can have whatever input you would like and then because I've made my magic mouth exactly one stripe long to change the length that it plays for all I need to do is change this time here okay so that's the basics of sequencers I hope to hit these more later as we do some more complicated things but that's it for now thanks for stopping by